personal capital, free tool. Income statement, Schedule C taxes, and budgeting overview. Remove the cap on your capital using personal capital free tool. Here we are in our personal capital practice file. In a prior presentations, we connected to financial institutions in order to get some practice data that we can now utilize and focus on with. In this presentation, we're going to be focusing in on creating some type of income statement from the data that is in the personal capital from the financial information. Now, note that the income statement is not really where the personal capital is most used. We've discussed in prior presentations that we're really focused here on the net worth situation and um, and then investing planning type of activity into the future. That's the major focus. It's also not primarily focused on a business type of scenario. It's usually focused on personal uh, capital. However, if we are in a situation and we will imagine we're in a situation where we would like to have the personal data within personal capital, but we have a small gig work type of situation as well. And we need to, at the end of the year, create something like an income statement so that we can use that to help compile our taxes to create, say, a Schedule C for our individual income tax returns. Would it be enough then for us to use personal capital? Can we take that data and create what is not the major focus of personal capital, an income statement, from the data that we, we can then use for some other purpose. We might want to create an income statement for other reasons as well, which would include like a personal type of income statement as well. And we can do that in a similar fashion. So there are functionalities for personal capital to do that, but it's different than double entry accounting systems in an accounting software. If we were to compare and contrast that to say like a QuickBooks over here, this is QuickBooks. This is going to be something that is used not no, not focused typically on personal information, but typically focused on the business information and for small companies often focused on the income statement because that's what they need to compile in order to create the tax return. However, it, it's forcing us to use a double entry accounting system. Therefore, we have we're got to make both an income statement and a balance sheet as we add the data into the QuickBooks system. So if we were to use QuickBooks, then most likely most people would say, well, my business is large enough that I want to, I got to track the information in something with a double entry accounting system like QuickBooks, and then they would transfer their, their business information into QuickBooks and then use something else for personal. So you can then use QuickBooks in conjunction with something like a personal capital, putting the business information into QuickBooks, or you could use another QuickBooks file or the same QuickBooks file to track both business and personal information using a double entry accounting system. Uh, as well, less people do that. However, uh, it is useful to do that. I mean, I, I still, I do that. <laughs> so you could do that as well. But most people will probably pull in the business information here. If you want to do a personal and business in QuickBooks, we have courses on that and it's, uh, they're, they're great. They're excellent. If you pull the information into here, it'll typically go into the transactions tab. You could do a similar kind of bank feed kind of situation and it would go into the transactions tabs, you'd still have to do the categorization down here. So this information were, would be from say the bank in a similar way that you connect with personal capital. You would then have to add it to the system before it can be used to construct a balance sheet and an income statement. And you're forced to basically do a balance sheet and income statement because that's the double entry accounting system. So if you're in a personal capital type of situation over here, then we, once we get the data into the system, we're not really using a double entry accounting system. The balance sheet on the left-hand side is being created from the end point, from the financial institution. It's not being built from the double entry accounting system using the data. But we do have the data that we can then compile into an income statement. It just won't be connect, connected in the same way that it must be for a double entry accounting software like a QuickBooks. So that's kind of the difference. We have our balance sheet over here and it's nice that we could just create that by just trusting the financial institutions and then we can pull up the data if we want and then construct the information with the data into an income statement, which again is not the thing that, uh, that the personal capital is best at, but could we get away with basically doing that if we had a small company and taking those transactions and, and working with them. So the place to do that then is we would need to pull in the actual transactions. The transactions are not being constructed into an income statement in the same way as they would be with a QuickBooks, but they do allow us to categorize the transactions. Couple ways we can get into them. We can go to the overview up top and then into transactions, overview and then transactions. 
the nice thing here is that it gives you all the transactions uh, from all institutions if you choose basically all the institutions. You could also choose just the cash, you know, cash transactions here, which might be the, the way to go, or you can have all transactions, which includes cash and credit card transactions, so you can kind of parse them out. And this is a nice situation because then you can go into these items and categorize them. So, and this is what you have to do no matter what, if you're using whatever system, if you get the bank data in whatever way that you're gonna get the bank data, you're gonna to have to categorize. In QuickBooks, what happens if you get the bank data, this is QuickBooks, you would then have to basically categorize them and then confirm the data, meaning assign them to an account, confirm the data, and then QuickBooks will populate the income statement with it. If I go into cap the preferred capital, same kind of idea, we'd have to categorize it, and then the system's not going to automatically create an income statement. We would then have to basically download the data and just cons compile it into an income statement. It also has a nice tool for a tagging tool, which could be a great use, and I'm imagining we'll use this in the future, to tag the items that are business versus personal. This is a similar functionality if you've ever used QuickBooks over here to using class tracking, which can you can assign something to business versus personal if you have both items in the system and then create an income statement for business versus personal so that and we have courses on that if you want to check those out so if i go back on over here we're going to assign the class these two things are, are quite nice now note that you can find the same data because then we're going to have to download this data into an excel file compile it into an income statement you might say i can do the same thing if i just go to the institution the bank and i download the information you can do that as well but notice you will have to then go from institution to institution to download the data meaning if you have multiple banks and credit cards you can have to go to each one and download all the data and then sort it in in excel whereas here you've got all these category all these transactions from multiple institutions kind of compiled into one so you could go into them at one time and then categorize them all here and tag them all and then export it so it might be a little bit faster in this situation However, note that within personal capital, if you were trying to do this, say, at the end of the year and then set up an account in personal capital, for example, if you're in 2021 and I'm trying to do the taxes for all of 2020 and I've never used personal capital until today, then personal capital will probably not upload enough transactions, a whole year of your worth of transactions in order to, to do the income statement. But if you did the income statement or if you used personal capital for the entire year, then you would think you would have the, the financial data to then categorize and put in place. So if you're starting personal capital at the beginning of the year and then you go then you go forward from there, it should pull in you know a few months of data and then you can you can move from there and then you should have the data necessary at that point in time to do this kind of system if you so chose. Uh, if you don't, if you're just using personal capital, your other options, if you've never used it before and you don't have enough data, is to go to the bank and download the data in the form of, of a, um, hopefully a CSV file that you can then format as an Excel, or you can use an Excel template here called Money in Excel if you use some kind of uh, paid or subscription model with an Excel, and then it will allow you to do the same situation, but it typically downloads more transactions. So two or maybe even three years so if you're just trying to get if you're at the end of the year at this point you're just trying to compile everything right right now for an income statement for a schedule c and you you want all the data this might be an option or simply going to the bank and downloading the csv files might be an option if you were using personal capital for the entire year then you would have the data and then you can you might just use personal capital to help you to categorize it and then simply export it. And then once we export it, once properly categorized, it'll be easy for us to sort. That's gonna be the idea. We'll check it out as we go through the practice problem. Also note that you have the transactions here in the transactions dropdown. You can also go to transactions by going to like the accounts. So if I went to my PayPal account here, we've got transactions within PayPal itself and the categories and tags. So I might want to category that way. If I go from account to account, and we also have the items up top. If we go into the banking and cash flow, where we have the income and expenses, which will categorize inflows and outflows. Just realize that this one is a little bit tricky because when you're thinking about income and expenses, inflows and outflows, you would think that anything that increases the checking account would be an inflow and anything that decreases would be an outflow. But that's not, that's not actually the case here. Uh, the inflows are gonna be items that we categorize uh, as 
everything that's not that's an expense type of account. So in other words, if we categorize something as a tr as a transfer, say from PayPal to a checking account, for example, one checking account to another, then that transfer is not going to be included in the transaction detail here. So that's what we got to be kind of careful with over here. And it does give us a little income statement up top, which is nice, but the income statement's probably not detailed enough, you know, for us to cr to create say a schedule C because I'm going to have to break out business and personal information, so we'll probably have to export the data. So just to see what I'm talking about with this transfer thing, if I go back to the overview and then I go to transactions, next we're going to start to categorize and tag these items. When we categorize and tag them, Notice this item here, for example, is called a transfer. Since it's a transfer, it's not going to be recorded in income. So anything that I don't want to be income or expense, I may just categorize as transfer, and that'll that'll basically pull it pull it out of an income or expense, and it won't be showing up in income and expense. And then when I go back to the tab for the cash flow for income, it will it will not be income if it's transfer. So I need to go then through and categorize these. If it's not a transfer. I need to call it basically income, and then it will show up in the cash flows. So it's a couple, little bit of a nuance there when you go back and forth from the transaction detail to like the income and expense. So that we'll, we'll start to practice with that next time. Uh, we'll start to categorize. And like I say, no matter what you do, you're going to have to categorize whether you download the data from, uh, from a system, whether you use accounting software like QuickBooks, whether you, you know, connect to the bank or, you know, whatever you're going to have to do, you're going to have to then categorize the information somehow. And once it's categorized, then it's pretty easy to sort either with, with Excel, like we'll take a look at, or QuickBooks will then sort it once you categorize them if you use something like business software. So we'll continue with that uh, next time. Just remember that this probably isn't the main use for the software. The main use is to track the investment data, but it, it, is it something that you can use with just like one software possibly and pick up, say, gig work or make an income statement when you need it and help you out with balance sheet information for someone that doesn't have a need for something as detailed as a double entry accounting system in QuickBooks. That's what we'll take a look at first because that's, that's where we focus. That's what I, that's what I do. So we'll take a look at it.